It says, music is a higher revelation than all wisdom and philosophy. And I thought that was very appropriate for, uh, for your presentation, John, in terms of music. And I, when I saw it this morning, I said, I'm going to have to share that with everybody in our uh, assembled group. Music is a higher revelation than all wisdom and philosophy. Ludwig von Beethoven. Beautiful. I want to uh, invite uh, my two colleagues who I see here, Rich L. Bagley and Donna Wissinger, to uh, offer a comment or two if you wish. I'll mention that uh, when I was at RPI as an undergraduate, Rich was a graduate student and turned out to be my physics professor. And he literally taught me so much physics, we felt the natural path forward was through music. What do you say to that, Richard? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, right, pretty much from the outset, um, John and I um, part of, were actually part of a fraternity and we sponsored a series of concerts. And that's actually where our first um, concert of ideas happened on the American dream. So we've always, we pretty much felt that, uh, that we were both in the sciences, but we both felt the appeal of music and we were able to combine the two together in very creative ways. And I always thought one of John's best programs, you know, everybody who, who is somewhat inclined like this can do a physics of music program. But John had the genius to come up with the music of physics which uh, we've, we've got to do a couple of times in various places. And it's, uh, it's, it's just an interesting idea. Um, what have always appealed to me about the star thrower was the spiritual dimensions of it. And uh, taking Isley from a very dark place, um, John, John didn't quite, wasn't quite grim enough in his description of this eye revolving in his head and seeing death and destruction and obviously having this vision that man could do more, man can define his own world and bring love into it, something which didn't seem to be in science. And it just revolutionized. He saw that the star thrower for the first, for the first time was actually doing something for the benefit of another species, which didn't also benefit himself, uh, except spiritually. And this, this, was, this was the big idea. And it's uh, how Isley goes back and becomes a star thrower. The language in the end of the essay is just incredible. And uh, John did capture it in, in the, the, the dialogue that the dialogues and the, and the verses that he set up. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Rich. Donna? Wow, Rich, I'm glad you brought that up because that was what struck me. Uh, and in fact, um, when I uh, shared some of the story with students, um, I still have images of that great eye that was uh, an invitation to a relationship uh, filled with love beyond, beyond who we are. And I was going to comment about the work uh, that we did in Albany. And the teachers were immensely uh, invigorated and um, they did some reinvention of themselves. For me, watching students light up and say, this is what I thought education would be. This is where I feel at home. This is where I'm excited in my whole being, my mind, my spirit, everything is coalescing in uh, who I can become, as John would often say from La Mancha, uh, who I can choose to be. And that was what was so exciting for me to watch students, just the energy, their body language at first, uh, a bit reticent not, reticent, not knowing, and watch them just blossom into the entire space of who they were it was uh, immensely fulfilling. Our magical flutist, Donna, thank you. Thank you. Jim, I promised that we'd come back to you you were not only our host and leader at the University at Albany for this initial year of the Renaissance Center, uh, you have this storied beginning as a, a young fellow who's 
whose mother ran around with Lauren Isley as his young helper and uh, just was in and out of your house. Tell us a little about that. I want to just say in the beginning that uh, the um, way that you transformed my university from a place that was a little bit uh, challenged with self-doubt after its president had left and they made me interim uh, into a place that was uh, vigorous and vital and really put the heart and mind in curious motion was phenomenal. And then you followed that up with the Renaissance Center uh, going after the most precious resource that a university has, which is its students led by another most precious resource, which is its faculty, and did the same thing again. So uh, I was uh, going to attribute all of that inspiration to you, but maybe I'll attribute it to Isley. Because uh, growing up in my mother's and father's house, and my father was a provost, as John had mentioned, uh, and was close to the Isleys, my mother was too. Um, he caused people to do things that were um, extraordinary, that exceeded themselves. So I'll tell a very quick story, uh, one that is safe to tell at this time because the statute of limitations has expired. Uh, so my mother um, took a deep, deep interest in Isley, I think partly because she saw in him uh, her own father who had recently passed at 96, can't complain about that. Um, and um, uh, she began to spend time with him, especially when it was possible for her to be useful to him in his physically declining years, but not mentally. And so when he passed um, and he was buried at the West Laurel Ceremony uh, uh, Cemetery, um, um, he left with my mother uh, a regret. Um, he told her at one point that there was this very special bone that he discovered and that he wished that he could have been buried with it. Um, now, as I mentioned, Lauren got people to do extraordinary things. So as the wife of the former provost, my mother went down to the provost's office and talked her way into it uh, and retrieved that bone. Or she may have retrieved it from his office. I wasn't sure. Uh, and then at night, she went to the West Laurel Ceremony, well, the cemetery, um, and dug up his grave uh, and planted the bone in the ground on top of his casket. Uh, she went at four in the morning. Um, she was, uh, I think, um, in her high 60s. Um, uh, I didn't even know she had a shovel, um, but she did all of this work in order to uh, make a symmetry between Isley's request to her, a wistful one that I don't think he ever intended to be fulfilled, and her love and affection for him to fulfill that request. So um, it was something that uh, she kept to herself for years and then finally told us all about. Um, but it was a, another just extraordinary example of the impact that Lauren had as a human being on people largely through his writings, since that's the way most of us would know him, but also personally. Um, so that's, I think, the story that uh, John wanted me to tell, and I see it connected to the story of the Renaissance Center's work at the university and its uh, potential for the future to really set the heart and mind in curious motion in a way that uh, um, only uh, can happen occasionally, but needs to happen much more in our world, especially in the educational system. So I hope that was it, John. I hope I told the story the way you wanted me to. Well, you did great, Jim, as always. Thank you. Thank you. Paula.